Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. John, Bishop of the Church of God, on behalf of the clergy and the people of the Diocese of Tennessee, we present to you a heart appeal be ordained a priest in Christ's holy Catholic Church. Has she been selected in accordance with the canons of this church? And do you believe her manner of life to be suitable to the exercise of this ministry? We certify to you that she has satisfied the requirements of the canons, and we believe her to be qualified for this order. Will you be loyal to the doctrine, discipline, and worship of Christ as this church has received them? And will you, in accordance with the canons of this church, obey your bishop and other ministers who may have authority over you and your work? I am willing and ready to do so, and I solemnly declare that I do believe the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testament to be the Word of God and to contain all things necessary to salvation. And I do solemnly engage to conform to the doctrine, discipline, and worship of the Episcopal Church. Dear friends in Christ, you know the importance of this ministry and the weight of your responsibility in presenting Margaret Peel for ordination to the sacred priesthood. Therefore, if any of you know any impediment or crime because of which we should not proceed, come forward now and make it known. Is it your will that Margaret be ordained a priest? It is. Will you uphold her in this ministry? We will. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. that they may be filled with your love, may hunger for truth, 
and may thirst after righteousness, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, for Margaret, chosen priest in your church, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That she may faithfully fulfill the duties of this ministry, build up your church, and glorify your name, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, she may be sustained and encouraged to persevere to the end, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For her family, that they may be adorned with all Christian virtues, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who fear God and believe in him, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who do not yet believe, and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote, and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all blessings upon all human labor, and for the right and the right use of the riches of creation, and that the world may be free from poverty, famine, and disaster, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for ourselves, for the forgiveness of our sins, and for the grace of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the communion of your church, and for those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints, they may rest in the place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord our God. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of unchangeable power and eternal life, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
reading from the prophet Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me! I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. The word of the Lord. We will now read Psalm 43 as found in our bulletin in unison. Give judgment for me, O God, and defend my cause against this ungodly people. Deliver me from the deceitful and wicked. For you are the God of my strength. Why have you put me from you? And why do I go so heavily while the enemy oppresses me? Send out your light and your truth. That they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling, that I may go to the altar of God, to the God of my joy and gladness, and on the heart I will give thanks to you, O God of my God. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul, and why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to Him. Who is the help of my countenance and my God? A reading from Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise. 
Street, thank you for inviting me to do this. Um, doubly hard to come and preach your ordination today because, indeed, Bishop Margaret's ordination of the diaconate is probably the best sermon I ever heard. I've <laughs> ever heard um, at an ordination. Canon Snare, the uh, uh, canon uh, of our diocese, um, the bishop's assistant, preached this absolutely spectacular sermon. And the day Margaret asked me to come and preach, um, this ordination, I thought, you just can't undo that. You can't get better than what you've already, the instruction you've already been given. I need to say two things before we break open the text. Um, firstly, to people of St. Matthew, um, thank you for looking after Margaret. Um, she has been an integral part of our community in Nashville for some time, and it's nice to know that she segued somewhere where she's not fending for her life, but is being tendered. Well, I, I mean, we know that there are some churches that love chewing clergy up and spitting them out. Uh, they feel that that's their responsibility. So it's nice to know that, that Margaret has been able to come someplace to get her feet under her and to be nurtured and formed by a loving community. And she speaks nothing but great things of you. So thank you for, for taking care of her. <laughs> Wonder. Uh, the text today, in fact the whole of God's word, uh, invites you to understand that the ministry you're called to today, although unique, isn't going to make or break the church. Oh, there are some pretty condemning things said in Scripture of the leadership that chooses to be unfaithful. Uh, I was reading just recently the words of the 10th chapter of the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Not something that you just go about and read every day, but if you read the book of the prophet, he is trying to stir the people of Israel up uh, before they are dispersed into exile because of their unfaithfulness. So the nation is kind of going to hell in a handbasket, and, um, and God is using Jeremiah to try to stir the community to say, let's get our act together, or we're going to be in a pretty bad way. So when the prophet says this, for the shepherds are stupid, and do not inquire of the Lord, therefore they have um, they have not prospered and all their flock is scattered. The implication is pretty strong that it's the leadership's fault that the community may be being broken apart. You live close enough to the capital to know that there's lots of blame put in those very way in, in that very way. So I don't want to I don't want to pull back and say it's not completely the responsibility of those ordained into Christ's body. But at the same time, the real call on your life tonight, the call that you have been struggling with for years, is the call to be a listener. It's the call of God on you to have ears that are particularly attentive to the way of God. The danger in the church, one of the dangers in the church, in our particular generation, is that we have ears for everything else and seldom have ears that are actually open to listen to God. Oh, there's a brilliant book on leadership called Leadership and Self-Deception. The whole theory of the book is that that we live in our own little boxes, whether we're, it's leadership in, in any area of life, we live in our own little boxes 
and are never willing to hear the nudge of the Spirit that will take us to where we should be. Tragically, we like to sanctify secular models of leadership or adopt leadership styles that seem to have worked in other tribes, other expressions of the church, but haven't developed the ability ourselves to actually listen to God. I haven't been ordained as long as many, but in the 38 years that I've been around in church leadership, the times I've chosen not to listen and to go hard-headed and hard-hearted off of my own direction, it's not only been to my sorrow and, and, and my demise, but it's affected directly the church. When, on the other hand, on those few occasions that I've determined that I want to listen to God first, much to my joy, the rich blessing is not only within, but it just seems to spread in the community. We have a remarkable tradition. Oh, I know that sometimes you think of Episcopalians as being God's frozen chosen. But the truth is, we have a remarkable tradition. The heritage we have in our prayer book and the heritage we have been given in our approach to doing theology and breaking open God's Word is a remarkable gift. And you've now been called by God to exercise leadership in this community. Not leadership with bells and whistles and magic acts, and, but leadership that's going to begin on your knees with the scripture in one hand, the prayer book and a newspaper somewhere close by, so you can be listening to how God is at work, and then when you get up on your knees, be courageous enough to stand fast. I am not convinced we know how to divest ourselves from the voices of the world. I think Culturally, the church has been deceived into thinking that if it works well in the local Lions Club or if it works well in IBM or Apple, it's going to work well for us. And we can be deceived to believe that for a short period of time. But quickly, we're going to have to try something else. And we'll be trying new and innovative things for the whole of our ministry. But we don't need to. Because we've inherited this remarkable gift in our church. And as we faithfully do the office, listen to God day in and day out, He's going to give you all the direction. The key is opening your ears. Jesus challenged the leadership in uh, the temple during his lifetime. And the big challenge that he placed on them was the same challenge that Jeremiah made of the people of Israel in his, in his time. That is, the shepherds weren't responsible for everything in the flock, but they were the ones called to exercise leadership on them. Our prayer, our community is praying for you tonight, back home. Our prayer is that you will have ears to hear and courage, courage to stand fast to the Lord your God. Let's pray.
We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made a man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He descended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. My sister, the Church is the family of God, the body of Christ, and the temple of the Holy Spirit. All baptized people are called to make Christ known as Savior and Lord, and to share in the renewing of his world. Now you are called to work as a pastor, priest, and teacher, together with your bishop and fellow presbyters, and to, make your, and to take your share in the council of the church. As a priest, it will be your task to proclaim by word and deed the gospel of Jesus Christ, to fashion your life in accordance with its precepts. You are to love and serve the people among whom you work, caring alike for young and old, strong and weak, rich and poor. You are to preach, declare God's forgiveness to penitent sinners, to pronounce God's blessing, to share in the administration of holy baptism and in the celebration of the mysteries of Christ's body and blood, and to perform the other ministrations entrusted to you. In all that you do, you are to nourish Christ's people from the riches of his grace and strengthen them to glorify God in this life and in the life my sister, do you believe that you are truly called by God in his church to this priesthood? I believe I am so called. You now, in the presence of the church, commit yourself to this trust and responsibility. I do. Will you respect and be guided by the pastoral direction and leadership of your bishop? I will. Will you be diligent in the reading and study of the Holy Scriptures and in seeking the knowledge of such things as may make you a stronger and more able minister of Christ. I will. Will you endeavor so to minister the word of God and the sacraments of the new covenant, the reconciling love of Christ may be known and received? I will. Will you undertake to be a faithful pastor to all whom you are called to serve, laboring together with them and with your fellow ministers to build up the families of I will. Will you do your best to pattern your life in accordance with the teachings of Christ, so that you may be a wholesome example to your people? I will. Will you persevere in prayer, both in public and in private, asking God's grace both for yourself and for others, offering all your labors to God through the mediation of Jesus Christ and in the sanctification of the Holy Spirit? I will. May the Lord, who has given you the will to do these things, give you the grace and power to perform them. Amen.
God and Father of all, we praise you for your infinite love in calling us to be a holy people in the kingdom of your Son, Jesus our Lord, who is the image of your eternal and invisible glory, the firstborn among many brethren and the head of the church. We thank you that by his death he has overcome death, and having ascended into heaven, has poured his gifts abundantly upon your people, making some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry and the building up of his body. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Margaret, fill her with grace and power, and make her a priest in your church. May she exalt you, O Lord, in the midst of your people, offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to you, boldly proclaim the gospel of salvation, and rightly administer the sacraments of the new covenant. Make her a faithful pastor, a patient teacher, and a wise counselor. Rather than all things, she may serve without reproach, so that your people may be strengthened and your name glorified in all the world. All this we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. Receive this Bible as a sign of the authority given you to preach the Word of God and to administer His holy sacraments. Do not forget the trust committed to you as a priest of the Church of God. So the prayer book says that I'm supposed to greet the newly ordained priest at this time. So I'm going to I'm going to do that in this fashion before I exchange the peace with her. Um, and that is uh, just simply to say that uh, I am so glad that Margaret has found this call here at St. Matthew's Church. Uh, I think it is a blessing to her, and, because I know you all are going to be a blessing to her, aren't you? <laughs> uh, but, but I also know that she's going to be a blessing to you, and God's, God's uh, people will be strengthened, and God will be glorified in this ministry. Uh, so the, the other thing I want to say to you is, you know, Margaret's only on loan from the Diocese of Tennessee. We are, we are grateful to you, and it's a real pleasure for me to invite the new priest at this time to uh, it, offer up the peace. Margaret. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Through the great shepherd of your flock, Jesus Christ our Lord, who after his resurrection sent forth his apostles to preach the gospel and to teach all nations, and promise to be with them always, even to the end of the ages. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant to shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Matthew and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. And therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for giving us the holy food, the body and blood of your Son, and for uniting us through him in the fellowship of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for raising up among us faithful servants for the ministry of your word and sacraments. We pray that Margaret may be to us an effective example for the new priest to give us her blessing. Margaret. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen.